Welcome back everyone, Houston Math Prep here with another integration video, this time on integrating using completing the square. This is something that you would use when you have a quadratic polynomial in the denominator of some sort of rational expression, um, particularly where b is not zero, so you have some sort of an x term basically uh, in a quadratic, um, and in particular when it is maybe not factorable. If your denominator has a quadratic and it's factorable, you might use something called partial fraction decomposition. Here we're going to focus on when it is not particularly factorable and when you'll use completing the square. So each of these you can see the examples we're going to do in this video. We have a quadratic. Uh, it has an x term, so b is not zero. We even have one that's inside of a square root here, a little bit different. So let's work through these examples together. For this first one, the idea of completing the square is this 26 after the 10x does not make it into a perfect square. It would not factor into the same thing twice. So what I want to do is imagine what constant would work that would make this factor into the same thing twice. And the way we do this is we look at b, we take half of b, if you recall, and we square it. And that will give us the constant that we need to add. And so if we take half of that, that's going to be 5. And if we square 5, then we will want to add 25. Now I can't just add 25, obviously. So to balance that out, we also subtract 25. And so our denominator for this one is going to become this perfect square plus some extra stuff here. So if you look at what this factors into, this becomes x plus 5 times x plus 5, also known as x plus 5 squared for this part. And then plus 26 minus 25 would just be plus 1 if we go ahead and combine those terms there. So we use the plus 25 to be part of the square. When we complete the square, we use the minus 25 to adjust what we actually had originally for our constant. If we go ahead and write our integral now, so that will be the integral of dx over x plus 5 quantity squared plus 1. If you look at what you have here, you have basically an inverse tangent antiderivative um, with x plus 5 in place of x. Okay, so if you recall a uh, formula for the antiderivative of something that looks like du over a squared plus u squared, that's going to give you 1 over a inverse tangent of u over a plus c. So that's what we're going to be using here. Um, in this case, our u is just x plus 5. Uh, obviously, du is just going to be dx based on that because the derivative of x would just be 1 dx. Uh, and here a is 1 in this case. So we have x plus 5 being our u. We have a being 1. So using this formula then, if we know this formula, our answer is going to be 1 over a, which is 1 over 1, so just 1. And this will be inverse tangent of x plus 5 over 1, u over a, which would just be x plus 5 plus c for this one. Okay, that's our first one. Let's look at another here. We've got the antiderivative of dx over x squared minus 4x plus 8. So a similar thing here, if I have x squared minus 4x plus something, and I have plus 8, so think about what you would need to add. Half of this would be negative 2, right? So negative 2 squared is going to give you 4. So we go ahead and we add 4, and then we subtract 4. Think about how this part factors now. This would be x minus 2, x minus 2, also known as x minus 2 squared. Plus 8 minus 4, if we simplify that, that will be plus 4. So if we go over and write our antiderivative in this new way, dx over the quantity x minus 2 squared plus 4. Okay, so again, we're going to be using this idea of the inverse tangent definition. So integral du over some constant squared plus some variable expression squared. Uh, in this case, our u is x minus 2 du then of course is going to just be dx, 1 dx, and then because this is 4, that's a squared, then a is actually 2 in this situation. And remember our antiderivative of this will be 1 over a inverse tangent of u over a plus c. 
Okay, so once we've figured out how to make this exactly what you might see on a formula chart, we'll go ahead and answer that. So one over a would now be one half. We would get inverse tangent of u over a, which would be x minus two over two plus our constant of integration here. Okay, our next one, this one's a little bit different. It's in a square root, but it's going to work out pretty much the same. The big difference here is that you'll notice I have a negative in front of my quadratic. So I want to think of this like seven minus, and then go ahead and put the rest of my terms, x squared plus six x. And I'm going to put something in here, right? I'm going to say plus blank when I complete the square. Okay, so if we look at uh, half of six would be three, and if you square three, then you're going to need to do that. Now be careful, you have a minus out here. So minus nine is what we really did. We subtracted nine. So now I need to do the opposite, which is add nine to balance it out. It looked like we add nine in there, but we didn't really because there's a minus out front. Okay, so think about what we have. We have uh, this perfect square, which is x plus three times x plus three. So that's x plus three squared, this part. And then the constants outside really give us 16, right? So we have 16 minus x plus three quantity squared. Okay, let's go ahead and write our integral the new way. So we'll have integral dx over square root of 16 minus x plus three quantity squared. Okay, and we are going to be using for this one, we're going to be using the idea of the antiderivative of du over the square root of some number squared minus some variable expression squared. We're going to be using that is the inverse sine of u over a plus c. So that formula that you may remember from definitions. Okay, in this particular example then, our a is certainly going to be four, four squared is the 16. Our u that's being squared is x plus three in this case, and so then du would be one dx or just dx. So for this one here, we'll go ahead and say our answer. We have the inverse sine of u over a, which is going to be x plus three over four, plus our constant of integration from our formula there. For our last example here, you might notice that we have an x on top. We don't just have some sort of constant times dx. So this one a bit different. We try to first do a u sub with this. Um, so if we think about u is equal to x squared plus eight x, plus 17, then our du would be 2x plus 8 dx. And if we go through and we look at this, we notice, well, we don't really have 2x plus 8, but algebraically we could probably turn x plus 3 into 2x plus 8 uh, with a little bit of trickery here. So what we'll go ahead and do is notice we need the 2x there. So maybe I want to go ahead and try and multiply the top by 2. If I do that, I need to multiply the bottom by 2 as well in order to keep it how I had things originally. So maybe we multiply by a half out front to try to take care of that. So let's say we then think of it as 1 half times the integral of 2x plus 6, so we're much closer, right, on the top, over x squared plus 8x plus 17 dx. And now you'll notice we're only off by 2, so if I could somehow add 2, except we're not allowed to just add 2 to the top and the bottom, that doesn't work. Uh, so, But what we'll do is we'll add 2 and subtract 2 to the top here, and then we will have something that we can use. So we'll go ahead and say one half. And if you notice, go ahead and combine this stuff here, but leave the minus two out. So that will be two X plus eight. We'll have a minus two left over out there. And then we'll have all that stuff over our original quadratic. What we can then do is say, well, the minus two doesn't really belong in here, so we need to split it up into two separate integrals, right? So we could say one half and do exactly what du is, two x plus eight dx. 
So we'll set up one that is purposefully exactly a UDU situation, right? So we've, what we've set up is that this is U and that everything up here is DU. So that part is taken care of. If we write down the second integral, so if we think of this as one half times the second part, um, one half times two would just be one there. So I'll just say minus one, and then we'll put our denominator down there, x squared plus eight x plus 17 dx. And this one then is something that we would need to complete the square to do. So that's an example of completing the square being part of what you do and maybe not all of what you're doing, if that makes sense. So in this one, we should know the answer. This is one half. If it's du over u, that's a log rule, right? So that would be ln of x squared plus 8x plus 17. And then for this one here, if we do the complete the square bit, then we'll think of x squared plus 8x plus something to complete the square. Half of 8 is 4, square that you get 16. So we'll add 16 and subtract 16, and that will give us x plus 4 all squared, plus 17 minus 16 is plus 1. And so we'll go ahead and change this into minus integral dx over x plus 4 squared plus 1. And now this looks like an inverse tangent, if you'll notice. So this will be a equals 1, and u equals x plus 4, and du is just dx. And then we go ahead and use our inverse tangent definition that we've already used a couple times in this video. So I'm not going to write the formula down again. We're just going to go ahead and say what we get for an answer here. So I get 1 half ln of my denominator there, and then we'll have a minus 1 over a would be 1 over 1, so just inverse tangent of u over a, which is x plus 4 over 1, also known as just x plus 4, plus c. So a little bit more complicated example in that we had to break up some stuff first before we used completing the square. But just keep in mind that completing the square is always an option. Once you've kind of moved things around and you still have a quadratic that doesn't factor down below, you're not sure what to do with it. Just keep that in mind. All right, we'll see you in the next video.